Black history. Um, this article came up and I, I wanted to ask your opinion on this. And again, guys, if you would like to request, please do so. New York school food vendor apologize for serving chicken and waffles on a first day of Black History Month. Um, New York Middle School is apologizing for serving students with a meal on the first day of Black History Month that was deemed to be culturally insensitive. What Administra the hell is insensitive about that? <laughs> and administrators at Nyack Middle School says that the hot lunch menu was changed by the vendor without their knowledge on February the 1st, the first day of Black History Month, to include chicken and waffles with watermelon dessert, which the school's principal called an unfortunate situation. We are extremely disappointed by this regrettable situation and apologize to the entire Nyack community for the cultural insensitivity displayed by our food service provider. So what um, the it, hell is that? Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles you in want several them. locations in Los Angeles, California, including on Gower Street, right down from the studio, including on, let's see, is it La Brea in LA also? I may be wrong on the street. I haven't been there in about mm -hmm. eight or nine years. Yeah, but it's something new, but it's soul food. As a matter of fact, what the fool doesn't realize is so-called soul food is a type. And if you get to certain places in the South, you will find that there are black and white cooks for the stuff and always have been. One of the favorite soul food places for black and white folk in Memphis, if you go in, it's a white-owned business. But they've got a lot of black folk and white folk work there. A lot of white people used to like to go to a certain place now closed, but it was black. So it's a type of food that was developed and enjoyed by people in a certain economic circumstance in a certain region of the country where it was hot. And refrigeration is very new. And an ice box was a thing that this took place about 100 years ago. And if you went through some of these towns as recently as when I got here half a century ago, they still had horse, well, drawn wagons or beat up trucks that had ice in the back where they dropped off blocks of ice for people to put in their ice boxes, not refrigerators. Well, let me let me say this, because th let me just read this quote real quick. I am disappointed that. Our remark, that's the company that provides the lunches, will serve items that differ from the published monthly menu, especially items that reinforce negative stereotypes concerning African-American community. First of all, chicken and waffles and watermelon does is not a negative stereotype. Me being in elementary school, if you serve me some fried chicken and waffles and watermelon, I'm going to be happy because that's better than the garbage that you're feeding these kids in the first place. And what is wrong with providing different cultural foods that is highlighting when you have a month highlighting that culture, that African, that Black American culture. If it's Hispanic month, why not have Latin or Hispanic food? What is wrong with that? Why is that insensitive? Watermelon is healthy for you. Is it the negative caricatures that they depicted out in the media that they're ashamed of? But forget all that. Our food speaks a lot for our contributions here in America. So I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, and is every place you go get tacos supposed to actually be run by somebody from Mexico or every place you might go to get uh, General Powell's chicken or beef supposed to actually be operated by, et cetera, or every place you might get spaghetti operated by Italianos? No, it's not. See, it's a type of food. And the other thing is, it's called ignorance. In other words, you've got a preconceived idea about something which may reflect bad prejudice, bias, or just rank stupidity. It depends. And you've got a preconception of what something consists of, and you really don't have a clue. That, by the way, is why we are supposed to have Black History Month, so we can study these things and understand something about what this means and are there any lessons that we can use right now to make tomorrow better. 
but you see people don't get that connection. For example, if you study uh, what we call soul food, actually what you're talking about is the English underclass combined with the indentured servants, a lot of whom came from France because they were attempting to uh, escape uh, Catholic repression when they had the Protestant Reformation and the Hundred Years' War, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these commoners and people at the bottom of the economic totem pole, they made do with what they could acquire. And it mm-hmm. wasn't high on the hog, so to speak. So soul food cooked a certain way, which is commensurate with the hot weather and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it is what it is. So get over it and move on. And by the way, the same thing happened about five years ago on the East Coast at a college where some black students got upset because of what some white cooks put together who just happened to be from the South. And actually what they put together was in fact soul food for everybody in the South. So, you know, it is what it is. Ignorance has its consequences. Um, Well, speaking of ignorance, you know, as far as this um, food, vendor food, um, celebrate in Black history by having certain African American dishes. You know the whole thing with um, when they saying what's well, a negative um, stereotype. I don't think so. Just like they took ancient mama off of the box, and they were saying well that was a negative caricature, caricature um, having ancient mama for all these decades. But you you've said ancient mama was an actual person who made a fortune with her image. Yeah, um, General Foods bought the rights to something she invented. You know what it was? She was the first person that would that commercially produced pre-mixed food. In other words, right now, women, men, housewives, people who are bachelors, they buy cake mix. They buy various mixes, you know, add water, a cup of milk, you know, salt, whatever, and stir it up, put it in the oven, preheated to such and such degree. Well, she rent, she invented that, and I think it was General Foods bought the rights. And that was her actual picture on the Aunt Jemima pancake box. And her descendants, remember some talking about generational wealth, were getting a very large sum of money every year that now they no longer get because some fools who didn't understand it took it as demeaning. So you're talking about black enterprise. Here's black enterprise. It turned big time. It not only was just black enterprise, it was innovative in the sense that humanity gained from it because this is the person that invented pre-mixed food that had to be baked or otherwise prepared. Now, all over the world, people are benefiting from this process of pre-mixed, whether you're talking about Africa or you're talking about Alaska. So you had somebody who invented it, celebrated and recognized, and she was known as Aunt Jemima. That was her claim. That's what she chose to do. So some people who thought they were being all this and that said, no, it's insulting. Take it down. Mm -hmm. You're Uh, exactly right. That's more to study for African-American or black history. Also, um, Adam, I see you. Just give me a minute. Um, I I put the article because I don't know how to put it up in a jumbotron thing. It was an article that I dropped um, under the space. It says, this is and this article was back in 2015. Latino owned Colorado restaurant plans to hold White Appreciation Day. Um, a Colorado barbecue joint is cooking up a slew of controversial with a plan to hold White Appreciation Day. Um, and this was they was going to do it in the month of June. So stuff like this, this is ignorance. White Appreciation Day, you know, um, on June 11th, on June 11th, what we plan on doing is White Appreciation Day. And basically on that day, 
all white people would get 10% off. So, you know, to me, that's just far extreme. Um, and it's also far extreme to say that um, African American slash black, specifically black American food, soul food is insensitive to have it in schools. We go into these far to these far extremes and we need a, 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 a balance, you know, of some type of intellect here. And I wanted to ask you, Judge, and then I'm going to come to you, Adam, and anybody else that want to request, you know, Black History Month, it is important to have, but what can we do, you know what I'm saying, to um, commemorate and give respect to this month and not... Don't need to make it a Black Appreciation Month. It's Black History. And if you let them make it Black Appreciation Month or Black Celebration Month, you defeat its purposes. Where is the history? Where are those things that we can study so we learn the lessons that guide our current conduct that shape tomorrow, that will shape tomorrow? See, when you turn it into somebody, I said this earlier during this thing, to somebody bug dancing and singing and all of that, that's not history. That's not why we study history. It is history, but it's unimportant. History is what actually happened with Black Wall Street. Why is it that we assume it's one place one that got burnt down and people got lynched in when it was only one of 123 similar locations within a three-year period of time. Why is it that nobody knows now that in Washington, D.C., when they had a riot to go kill and lynch Black folk in Washington, D.C., and the president, a Democrat, did nothing about it until it got out of control by a very interesting measure and he sent in the u.s cavalry what was the measure u.s army veterans from world war one armed with weapons that the black pullman car porters smuggled in from baltimore got on the roofs of tenements that were the targets of being burnt down and they started shooting the rioters who were attempting to pull the black tenants out and hurt them and it was the only riot where more white people got killed than black people did. Why don't they talk about that one and the lessons that might be learned? All right. Why don't we talk about the other 122 locations that also got torched, torn down and people lynched from and in during that period of time? And is there any lesson that might be applied to today? What does it also say to the entire nation when it comes to what happens in times of tension and stress and insecurity? What do we do? What does it say about the tendency of the country to scapegoat? And what happens with that in terms of how we ignore problems that are on the horizon that we will have to deal with, sometimes very painfully? You see, we don't get into that. We don't even talk about that. But that's why we have history. That's right. what we study about. And Black history is supposed to be an opportunity for the country to focus on this aspects of its history. Because as you and I have talked, really... The weird thing about black history is that it is an exact synthesis of American history, all that's wrong about it and all that's right about it. And it has a lot of lessons for everybody, white, black, brown, red, yellow. It doesn't make any difference. What black history is about is like the history of ancient Rome. Ancient Rome was the whole world. And when you talk about African-American history, you talk about the history of the United States because the two things, American history and black history in this country are so inextricably bound up that what happens is February is the reality month for the country. In other words, hey, this is the other side 
you guys don't like to talk about, but you need to deal with because it is a reality as much as the side you do like to look into the other 11 months out of the year. Right. Um, Adam, you had your hand up. And anybody else, I would suggest you request now to speak because we're not going to be up here much longer. Go ahead, Adam. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, through my my younger years and teens. And uh, I grew up with comedians like Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, uh, Mel Brooks, all the greats. You know what I mean? They're they're like if they came out with movies or, or, or comedy shows today, they'd be canceled in a hot minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, uh the thing was, is back then we, we, we used to kill racism by making fun of and, uh, you know, uh, making fun of the ignorances of, uh, you know, stereotypes, you know, and that was that was a, a thing that did exist. Yeah, people, some people are racist. Yeah, there's always going to be racist people and regardless of their color of their skin, they can be racist. Uh, you know, that's why I'm I'm personally I'm an individualist. I look at people as individuals. There's one quote that I could give you, give you guys that uh, stuck with me is you, you, you have groups of people, right? And within those groups of people, you have individuals. Now, as a group, one group might differ from the other completely, right? As a whole, but you have individuals within that group that might have more in common with a person from the other group than within their own group. You know what I mean? So, like, you could have somebody into, like, gaming and, you know, comic books and so on and so forth. They have more in common with somebody than maybe with within their own group. You know what I mean? Right. And so on and so forth. So that's why I, I'm an individualist, number number one. I don't look at people as, you know, colors, races, religions, whatever. I look at people as people and whatever whatever they present to me as, as the, you know, you know, looking at the world blind, I guess, you know, they say that's bad, but you know, that's how I treat people. I treat people all equally and equally well, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's very important, but you know, this PC stuff, uh, you know, I think it's just put a hamper on like, you know, fighting, you know, the, 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 the expression, you know, fighting against expression. It's, and and artistic expression and so on and so forth everything's just contorted in such a weird manner these days it's like yeah what um, just let me <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to carolyn just one second carolyn uh, let me just say this um i believe it was a, a young black girl in that nyack middle school that first complained about it and she probably complained about it to her mom or whatever because it was like a small interview on the news and she was like, well, I'm glad I spoke up, whatever, whatever. And let me just say this to that so-called bullshit woke community. She, because she's, she's already at that young age programmed to look at that from that one side of this is insensitive to have this type of food on the menu without understanding because she's too young to understand. And her mother is a little bit ignorant to you know, reprogram or understand herself is that when you depict foods, when you depict situations like that of food representing soul food to commemorate, commemorate a month, when you see that's insensitive and they should not have it, what you are feeding into and allowing is for a group of people, mainly liberals, that are underhandedly trying to wipe out any race your heritage contribution and history when you don't allow that to when you don't allow things like food and culture to be represented in your everyday life so i think what um aramark that's the company they would for any i don't think they did anything wrong they were actually doing something to make people aware of a particular group that actually built this country and what they contribute by way of food, you know? So, but that young girl, black girl is already programmed to look at that as being bad or insensitive. And that is a problem. 
Yeah, agre- agreed. I-, I live down here in South Florida. Wait, 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 one second, uh, I just wanted. To, I just want to say one thing. Uh, uh, you know, I I love I love Jamaican food. You know, I'm a South Floridian. Give me some uh, stuff, uh, some snapper grilled with stuff with collard greens and Excelsior crackers. I'm good with that all day and some brown stew and all that. I, I you know, it's, it, it's, right. it's food. I love cultural food. Right, you know, exactly. And I think, and I, I'm gonna go to Carolyn. I'm sorry, you're gonna meet yourself, Carolyn. Cow, cow. But with that. Because the, the what she was looking at, what she's taught is that watermelon is a negative depiction of. Wait one second, it was a little feedback, Carol. With watermelon is a negative depiction of black people, and I get it for what we have seen throughout the decades of how they depicted it in the media. But that was a perfect opportunity for that school to educate the students of watermelon was depicted in this negative light. But the truth is. It is healthy for you, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? So they missed an opportunity. All right, Carolyn, or is it Carol? It's Carol. Carol, yes, sorry about that. No problem. Hello, Judge, it's good to talk to you again. And thank you so much for the interview you did with us the other night on Friday night when we woke now. Thank you. Great, you dropped some heavy nuggets that night. I mean, it was a joy. But to your point, um, discussing this topic, this Black History, so-called Black History Month, which I think is ridiculous within this itself, because as you stated, Judge, we're American history. You, you cannot separate us from the fiber of what the history this so-called country was created upon. And it's so much uh, monetary now that has been bedded into this, this so-called Celebration Month with our, on, on the back of our people. And it's ridiculous in how they're doing it. I mean, you've all the sales, Black History Month sale and Black History Month this and Black History Month that. And you're losing the whole purpose of why we're even discussing the history. And that's the problem is they're not even discussing the history. You're gonna have the same five people every single year discuss. It's not Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and whomever else they wanna add on to that for those five. And they never go beyond that. You discuss uh, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They don't know, but most, most of our people, no matter if it's our people, white people, other people, do not understand what the Red Summer of 1919 was about. They never heard of it because no one's ever introduced it to them, nor have anyone ever dug it out to, and deep dive into the real history and the background of this country. And it's a sad thing because generation from generation, generation, we're losing our history and no one is bringing it forward to get to the depths of the deep rooted information that's in this country. And the reason why the United States don't want it told because of their guilt. They know what they did in this country. They know what they did with that people and they have to face it. They do not want to face it. When I was in college, I had a sociology teacher, professor, who had stacks and stacks and stacks of lynching books. And he would pass them out every morning and ask people, because we had, it was entered, was mixed, with black and white mix in the class, it was in the summertime. I was at HBCU, and they would come over because it was the only class that was given in the summer, they needed credit in order to graduate at their, at their primary uh, school they went to, predominantly white institution. And he would ask them with a sheet of paper, do you know any of these people in this book? And write, if you do, write their name down, their telephone number and address, I want to go talk to them about these people in these in the pictures of these lynchings. Nobody wants to face that. Nobody wants to go into the, the history of how lynching came about, how that was introduced, where the Ku Klux Klan came from, what happened in 1865 when Woodrow Wilson allowed the birth of a nation to be shown in the White House and how all that spread and started lynching. Nobody wants to talk about that. They want to talk about the same five people uh, Black Wall Street, and that's it. And then serve the food that, that Dana's got through saying, which is the regular food we eat every day. It's no different. We, we I eat chicken and waffles all the time. Not necessarily be on this particular month. And what was so wrong with that? As you stated, learn all foods. Watermelon, right. came, the watermelon came from Africa. We brought it here. Right. But that's, that's the ignorance and beyond the ignorance goes into the stupidity of not understanding our history. 
and teaching it to our children correctly so we can continue the history forward. We are losing our history because we don't teach it. I exactly. Was poured, I was poured. I'm 60 years old. I'll be 61 this year. I was poured into what happened with my family as it went forward. And then I took it upon myself to go deep dive into it, to find a real, the real deep, ugly, the, the get into the bowels of what was going on all the way back to the very, 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 very beginning. But nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to bring that forward because they want to feel good about the history. But you got to take the bad, the good, and the ugly with all the history because it's all history and it all connects together. Um, I would judge. Why well, is seeing a request? But when I look at requests, you're already co host and I see a dot. Uh, can you hear me? No. Mm -mm. Can, can you drop down and then come and then I request you? Let's see. Remove from co host. Uh, there's no going to remain in space, but will no longer be co host. You can add them as a co host later. Okay. Let's see. Remove. And then I'll yeah, bring shows I'm connecting. So yeah, and, mm -hmm. and invite the co host. All right, so I just invited him again to co host. Um, yeah, it's probably a connection issue. Mm -hmm. uh, one second. Okay. Oh, and I don't know what happened. This just regularly does yeah. every time I get on, but it is what it is. Those are profound <laughs> points. By the way, when I got here, you know what they used to call waterbellum down in Alabama? What's that? Field pudding. That's right. That's right. I remember that term. <laughs> hey, man. I you never knew that. Field pudding, man. That'd be Field real pudding. sweet, man. What the hell are you talking about? Uh -huh. I came in from California. Watermelon, man. Watermelon. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never, and that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of positive, like you could learn, you actually, you could really start the conversation of history around food and just let it expand, you know. Um, mute up for a second, I think it's slight <laughs> feedback. But um, so I, I just think they just missed an opportunity and what people have to understand, you're talking about, that's Nyack, Nyack, Nyack. I'm thinking of Long Island. And no, I think I it's like Nyack. Nyack is uh going towards northern New York State. That's in the yeah, that's yeah, state. Rockland County, right. right next to Paramount. I used to live in Paramount. Right. So you're talking about a heavy, heavily um democratic um area, Rockland County. Um, so yeah, and that's a lot of Jewish people live there. So the thing is, listen, they missed a big opportunity, and I really feel sorry for that young black girl and her mom not understanding the importance of allowing that. And how about you should have pushed, hey, if you're going to serve food to commemorate Black History Month, let's have a group conversation about our food, you know, and where it came from. Because yeah, watermelon came from Africa. In the South, they call it um what? Some type of pudding. Um so they just missed a bit, uh, a big opportunity there. There was something else that I wanted to say. Oh, speaking of Black history. So last week, Thursday on my YouTube, The Real Dana, we interviewed Isaiah Washington. And he is coming out with a new movie, Corsicana, based on Bass Reeves. And he plays Bass Reeves. And that drops tomorrow on Amazon, Apple, and Google, all the streaming services, right? And today, if you follow Isaiah Washington on Twitter um, at The Disruptor, um, and I'll put the flyer underneath in the comment section, because like I said, I don't know how to put it in Jumbotron, and if somebody can, just copy and paste and put it up there. He's having a Twitter space discussion on his movie tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So subscribe to him and join that Twitter space tonight because that's part of Black history. We talk about Bass Reeves and the West, you know, what was going on during that time. Who was Bass Reeves? Can I the give real... him a little advertisement? Of course. Bass Reeves holds the absolute distinction of having made more arrests 
than any other lawman in the history of the United States of America. He patrolled the Oklahoma Territory when notorious hanging Judge Parker appointed him as a marshal. And uh, he used to have Native American accompaniment, and he was known for disguises. And uh, there was a penitentiary in Ohio that absorbed these prisoners from the Oklahoma Territory. And there was an old radio station down the street, and there was a nearby speakeasy where the prison guards and the people who did the radio stations used to get together. Unlike the media now, they actually hung around with ordinary people. And they were interested in discovering that almost everybody in this federal penitentiary had been put there by this one marshal, this black marshal. And when they discovered he was black, they couldn't do anything with it. So they changed him to a former Texas Ranger. And that's interesting in and of itself. And they put a mask on him because this black marshal was a master of disguises. And he had Native American escorts always. And they made him have one escort named Tonto. And that's the basis for the Lone Ranger. Now, what's interesting in American history about the Texas Rangers? Well, the African Americans, the black people, joined the 54th, the 24th, 25th Infantry and the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments. They were known as the Buffalo Soldiers. You know, I had an uncle that was a Buffalo Soldier with the 10th Cavalry for a while, made top sergeant. Now, when you get that kind of situation, you get an interesting thing because this is the part of American history they don't tell you. The Texas Rangers killed more 9th and 10th Cavalry out than did the Native Americans or the Spanish during the Spanish-American War when they led the charge up San Juan Hill. They captured the Cuban flag, the Spanish flag, not Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders. Uh, even now in the American military academies, they talk about how Roosevelt's color sergeant at pistol point took the flag from a black sergeant who had captured it. But what were they saying about the Texas Rangers being the worst enemy of the black troopers by putting him in the place of Bass Reeves or a supposed former Texas Ranger? Next thing, Billy the Kid is an outlaw, right? If you read the diary of the 9th and 10th Cavalry, they considered him a hero because a lot of the villains he supposedly killed had harmed black troopers. Now, black troopers are supposed to be dealing with protecting the frontier, and there were a lot of black people who had migrated out west and a lot of white ones, but they suffered more casualties at the hands of white folk than they did from the Native Americans. Well, they shouldn't have been dealing with the Native Americans, but there's a movie starring, and it's a good one, um, what's his name, um, was in uh, Danny Glover, okay, he played that, and they, they talk about the conflict, they also talk about the Seminole scouts who look just like ordinary black folk with the difference that their mothers were Native American Seminoles rather than former slave women or slave women. And you also get into an interesting thing about Native American culture, which to become a chief at one time mean, meant that you had to count coup 
by delivering a blow to an enemy. And interestingly enough, after World War One, well, the Spanish American War, World War One, World War Two, Korea, and even the Nam counting coup also consisted for a number of the tribes if you were in the U.S. military service and you delivered what that was in effect to an enemy that you were fighting. It did not make any difference who the enemy was. So we've got all kinds of things in there and sorting out all of what I said makes an interesting study in the dynamics of the culture, sociology, psychology, and some other considerations that are just plain human and not limited to any ethnic group. So you see, this is something you should go visit this afternoon or evening because it's African-American Black History Month. And it says something about the whole country when you study Bass Reeves and also uncompromising justice, because one of the people that Bass Reeves arrested and charged and imprisoned for murder was his own son. What did his own son do? His son killed his wife, meaning Bass Reeves' daughter-in-law. So it's, it's interesting stuff in there. Go visit and check it out. It's something you ought to know. Right. And definitely go check out um, Isaiah Washington's Twitter space tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and go purchase his movie tomorrow, Chris Akana. And um, and yeah, and do your reading and research on the real story of Bass Reeves and everything that came out of that. All right. I think this is a good Twitter space. Um a little over two hours. I think we did good time. And um, everybody, please go to JJB2023.com. Sign up to the mailing list so you could be up to date with um, all the current news with um, Judge Joe Brown mayor campaign. Go to um, Judge Joe Brown, dollar sign, Judge Joe Brown 2023. And you could donate to his campaign via Cash App or you could go straight to the website and donate. To support Judge Joe Brown, and I will be dropping the um, three sections of this Twitter space starting tomorrow, probably tonight, underneath this tweet, underneath this um, Twitter space reminder tweet, and um, and you also follow me um, at the real Dana number seven on Twitter, and of course Judge at Judge Joe Brown TV. So um, I don't record it here, but I do record it and upload it on YouTube, Dana with the data. You could listen to this there. And then I'm also going to drop the link underneath this space as well between today and tomorrow. And thank you to all of the speakers that came up. Um, I think it was a lot of informative information that was put out today. And Judge, close us out. He muted. Judge, I mean... Hey, thanks for having me up here, and, and uh, just definitely an honor to speak with Judge Joe Brown, a uh, hero to me, definitely. Uh, much, much respect and much, much love to you, and uh, best of luck to you. And I, I hope you guys wish me luck. I'm going to be uh, going for a pardon on those, uh, ch those charges and getting those uh, withheld adjudication charges dismissed. Yes, I, I, and I uh, hopefully I'll have my citizenship soon. <laughs> and I hope the information that um, Ms. Angela and Judge Joe Brown gave you um, can yeah. help you as well. So I wrote it all you. down. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Okay. God bless America. And thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and honestly, this was a nice, smooth tour to space today, Judge, compared to last week. <laughs> um, go ahead. You could um, close us out. Okay. As we move on into the rest of our month, everybody's month, commit yourself to discovering the rules of the road where you live, meaning what is it that we exist under? Is it a system that needs changing or is it a system that we need to learn how to operate? I'll give you an example, and this is also a lesson from Black History Month. At one time, one of the most racist institutions in America was the NBA, known as the National Basketball Association. Now, 
outside of perhaps management and ownership. It certainly is not. When you think of the NBA now, you think of LeBron, Shaq, and some other people. You think of it as a black enterprise with a few white people in it. And everybody, black, white, brown, red, yellow, likes to watch it. But the rule book is essentially the same. So it's not the rule book that needed to be changed. It's something else that had to be changed to make it more mainstream. Think about that and think about what that means for you when you take yourself through the highways, byways, roadways, streets, alleys, public parking lots, and bridges of life here in the United States. What is the rule book all about? And what does it take to play the game that the rule book sets up? All right. Glad to have been here today. I've got a few more things to do. So hi, Brian. Got to go. This has been Joe. Get me when you can, since I'm the one that ran. And we'll be. Don't judge him, Joe Brown.